Do wrist locks and ankle locks work in self-defense? <laughs> oh boy, you really want to get me in trouble, don't you? Uh, wrist locks and ankle locks certainly do work in self-defense. What doesn't work is the Aikido wrist lock. And I'm sorry to all my Aikido friends, I've learned a lot from Aikido. But I've also learned <laughs> that it doesn't usually work in the context. One person once described it as a great martial art for restraining aged professors run amok. And I think that's very useful. So if a 70 year old professor who's upset about your incorrect citation in some essay that you write comes at you running like this, by all means, wrist lock them and hopefully they'll do that big giant Aikido self throw. In the real world, however, the problem with wrist locks is unless your forearms and your grip are gigantic and you can just grab onto a wrist force it into a bent position, and then use it, there's no control over the rest of the body. So while you're trying to do your outward wrist lock, uh, he's going to be hitting you, he's going to be instinctively stripping your grip. It certainly can work. I have seen wrist locks in sparring, but compared to the other number of uh, locks, you know, leg locks in, in, and I'm talking, you know, sort of an MMA type of sparring thing, I have seen wrist locks in MMA sparring they're hard because, of course, the glove reinforces the wrist and all the Aikido guys will go, of course, it doesn't work because the like, gloves reinforce the wrist. But if you're wearing the right kind of glove, you can still get wrist locked. And it's hard because you're not controlling your opponent. Wrist locks are much, much easier on the ground. And I think they can come on very, very quickly. You have to be very careful applying wrist locks. But on the ground, you can stop the movement. Now you can focus just on the wrist. And I love wrist locks on the ground. In fact, I use a lot of Aikido wrist locks like Sankyo is a good one, on the ground, escaping from rear mount, say, turning in, I, I wonder if I've got a video on that on YouTube, I should do it, because it's, you know, if you actually pull that off, you can go and do a victory lap, and you feel really good about yourself. Ankle locks, yeah, I think ankle locks work, but if you're an ankle lock country, I, in self-defense, I would switch to the heel hook. Unless you're restraining your aged uncle who had a few too many beer at the family picnic, if, you're, if this is a serious situation, and escalation is called for, I would go to the heel hook and just explode into it with all my might, trying to tear as many of the ligaments and destroy as much of the cartilage as I could. And you can do this fairly easily unless the guy's ridiculously flexible. So I would value the heel hook over the, over the ankle lock. And for the wrist lock, yeah, you can pull it off, but you got to be way better than your opponent or you need to be completely drunk or you need to have really gigantic forearms and a super strong grip, or a semi-compliant opponent. I mean, there's lots of pictures of cops escort, escorting protesters off with you know, a gooseneck come along wrist lock. Well, those people aren't really fighting. They're not there swinging for the fences. They're sitting there you know, singing, we shall overcome, and the cop picks them up and gets a wrist lock, and they know that if they resist and try and fight their way out of the wrist lock, they're going to get billy clubbed, they're going to get tasered, they're going to get shot. So they are somewhat compliant. To just say, to, you know, to point to cops use wrist locks all the time, yeah. And most of the time it's against a semi-resisting opponent, not a fully, you know, not in the middle of a full-on street fight. You know, that being said, if you're really, really good at them, yeah, you can incorporate them.